Welcome. In this tutorial video we'll be examining the equations of constant acceleration. Through our video we'll be looking at introduction of the equations, when to use these equations, and we'll examine some worked examples. So first of all, constant acceleration, as the name suggests, is a scenario whereby an object undergoes a constant acceleration over a period of time. Now acceleration can either mean to speed up or to slow down, so, if you like, there's a story, and the story commences with initial velocity, there's a period of either acceleration or deceleration in the case of slowing down, and then you finish the story with a final velocity. Now, throughout this duration, there will be displacement that's covered as well. Constant acceleration is used regularly in physics, particularly at year 11 and year 12 levels. Some common scenarios might be a car speeding up from the traffic lights, perhaps an object falling off a table, or a train slowing down as it approaches a station. All three of these examples have constant acceleration. It's worth mentioning at this point also that acceleration is a vector, and as such it requires a magnitude and a direction when it's being described. There are five variables we need to consider when we're using the equations of constant acceleration, and they are as follows. U is the initial velocity, V the final velocity, A the acceleration, x the displacement, and t the time. Now you notice each one of these five variables uses international standard units. That is meters per second, meters per second squared, meters and seconds. If, for example, we have a displacement in kilometers, we need to convert that back to meters. If we have a time, for example, in minutes, we need to convert that back to seconds in order to use the next five equations. And here are the equations. Each has been derived from a mathematical graphical relationship, which is easy enough to understand if you have time to research. So to use these equations, you need to have three known variables and one unknown variable. If you look at each of the five equations, you'll see that each is missing a different variable. For example, the first, v equals u plus at, doesn't have x in the expression. The second, x equals ut plus a half at squared, is missing variable v, and so forth. So when you're set with a problem, or faced with a problem with three known variables and one unknown variable, there's only ever one equation that's suitable to use. So let's look at some examples. Example number one. A car is travelling at 10 metres per second, accelerates at a rate of 2 metres per second squared for 10 seconds. What is its final velocity after this period of acceleration? Now because this vehicle is travelling, we consider it in a forward direction, we'll consider that to be positive for all other uh, variables that we measure or record. So first of all, let's write down the variables, both known and unknown, one underneath the other. So first of all, it's travelling at an initial speed of 10 metres per second. That's the start of our story, so u equals 10 metres per second. The acceleration is stated as 2 metres per second per second, or 2 metres per second squared and time is given for 10 seconds. We have one, two, three variables, and we're asked to find the final velocity, so we write down v equals question mark. It's our first stage in finding a solution. Step two. Step two is to select the correct equation. So we've got a u, a, t, and a v, so the first equation is the only one available with a u, a, t, and a v. So that's chosen. Step three is to substitute the values into the selected equation and solve. So you'll notice that where we had a u, we substitute the value 10. Where we have an a, we substitute the value for 2. And where we have a t, we substitute the value for 10. So v equals 10 plus 2 lots of 10, which is 20. So our final velocity for this particular problem is 30 meters per second. The car's final velocity is 30 meters per second forwards because it's a, fo a positive value. Now common sense would suggest that if you're starting at 10 metres per second and you accelerate at a rate of 2 metres per second every second for 10 seconds, you'll speed up by 20 seconds. So 30 metres per second is a logical answer. Let's have a look at another example. Example number two, Chris throws a stone down a well with an initial speed of 15 metres per second. If it takes 8 seconds to reach the bottom, how deep is the well? Again, let's consider the downwards motion as positive because this is the initial movement. So, writing down our known and unknown variables. The initial speed is 15 metres per second. U equals 15 metres per second. T 
is stated as 8 seconds. Acceleration isn't written, but when something is released with either an initial speed of 0 or an initial speed, in this case of 15, free fall on planet Earth means you accelerate, or the object accelerates, at 10 meters per second per second. So we can use that for any object that's falling on Earth. Finally, how deep is the well? X at displacement is the unknown quantity. So, we again select the correct equation with a ut, a and an x. Only one of those five equations can be used, and it looks like it would be the second one. Step three is to substitute the values in and solve. So, u, uh, sorry, x equals ut plus a half at squared. u is 15, t is 8, they're substituted in. Half times a of 10 and t squared is 8 squared. Notice the squared is only on the 8s only on the T. So that comes out to a depth of 440 metres, quite a deep well. Our third and final example. What final speed would a model rocket reach if from liftoff it accelerated at a constant rate of 15 metres per second per second over a distance of one kilometre? Again because the rock is going up as the initial movement we'll consider upwards as our positive direction. So it's from liftoff, and liftoff means we have initial speed of zero, u equals zero. A equals 15 meters per second per second, which is stated in the question, the acceleration. X the displacement is one kilometer. We must, as stated earlier, use SI units. So the distance the SI unit is meter. So our one kilometer is entered in as 1,000 meters. If we left it as one, the equation will work as though it's one meter and give us an incorrect answer. And finally, what final speed V equals question mark? We look at our equations, and only one of them, again, will have a u, a, x, and a v, and it is our final equation, v squared equals u squared plus 2ax. Final step is, we substitute our values in. So we substitute in a u of 0, an a of 15, and an x of 1,000, which gives us v squared equals 30,000, or v is the square root of 30,000. So in this fictitious example, after a height, of one kilometer, this model rocket would have a speed, a final speed for this story, of 173.2 meters per second. Once again, I hope this video has helped with your understanding of the equations of constant acceleration.